The reason why everyone is here today to see one of the biggest superstars in the world. He has sold more than 60 million records worldwide with his band Black Eyed Peas. Here he is live. Please welcome Will I Am. There we go. What's up? What's up? So we've got uh, we've got rapper, singer, songwriter, manager, producer, media mogul, uh, and I'm pretty sure I'm missing quite a few few others. How do you manage all of that? You just stay busy. <laughs> really, really, pretty much that's it. This, that's just it. Busy all the time. Yeah, you know. What started off just making music and wanting to write songs and produce your own stuff. And then from that point, it went to, I want to direct my own videos. <clears throat> then it went to the manager really not doing it the way you wanted to do it. Then you have to learn how to manage. So then you manage yourself. Then you start managing other people. Then you, then you want to do philanthropy because you want to you know make use of the money and the stuff that you're doing to aim certain issues to you know popular culture you start doing philanthropy and then you next thing you know you you are uh, you know using every minute of the day and then you sleep yeah. very little sleep i'm sure like four hours yeah yeah well i, I hear you four might be adding uh one more thing to that list it was just announced yesterday that mariah carey is going to be a judge on american idol and rumor has it that you may be an addition there is there any truth to that rumor um, I was trying to, that's why I came to Canada, because so, I wanted to, you know, wanted to be a host and uh, work over at Munch. <clears throat> you're you're going to come and take, take my job. No, I can't. You need to add it. that to your resume? I thought it would be cool, right? <laughs> hey, what's we up? Would love well, I'm here on Munch. I can do it. <laughs> you got it. I, I'm fine. I'll step aside. You can take care of it. Your hair is doper than mine, though. Sure. I don't know about that. You've you got, got a pretty sweet on both cut. Sides. I just got it on that side. Just on one side. Yeah. <clears throat> but let's talk about your album. Hashtag willpower, which is going to be out this fall. Now, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Twitter. We all love Twitter. But, but why the hashtag in the title? Well, the, if you think about, I mean, let's be real. How many people have CD players here? <laughs> There's a couple. A couple. Uh, how many people are on Twitter here? <laughs> so I wanted to incorporate what people are actually doing in the title of the record rather than ignore it thinking that it's 1999 it's not 1999 it's not 2009 it's a totally different time and that time is instant connectivity always being able to connect to people like i remember when i was when i loved de la so i wish i could follow de la i couldn't follow him now people you know have direct contact with me i tweet myself i see their tweets i respond to those things so why not call it hashtag willpower so we can have a conversation about having willpower to do the things that you want to do in life dun, 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 dun. imperial <clears throat> uh, well, we, we love as you said the conversation and the connectivity and, and being in touch with uh, the entire country all of canada wants to be in touch with you so we thought uh you know here at nml we love Twitter. we thought we could get a hashtag started while you're on the show here and see if we can get it trending across canada what do you think Canada, not worldwide. World, worldwide. <laughs> Let's take it there. Let's try to do worldwide. Because then, if you try to do worldwide, it's definitely going to get across Canada. Absolutely. So, what, what do you what do you think we should have as a hashtag for today? I wish I had the willpower too. I like that. Hashtag, I wish I had the willpower too. Canada, let's make it happen. Actually, it's East get it trending. I wish I had willpower too. Or, no, what's better? Wish I had the willpower too. It's too one. long, right? The, let's keep the. Right. I, like. I wish I had the willpower too, and then you think of what it is that you want to be able to do, right? And then people will answer it. So it's a question, and then um, I and, like that. Let's get the conversation going. Shenadang. There we go. You Canada, guys too. make it happen. But continue on with the conversation. I know your your album has a uh, has been influenced by a lot of electronic dance music, and I mean that's huge nowadays with David Guetta and Swedish House Mafia, both of whom you've worked with for actually quite a long time. But I understand you actually grew up listening to a lot of dance music. Yeah, you know, we started going to what they used to call raves um, back in uh, 19, back then when we were, you know, just youngins. 
and uh, a lot of our friends, LMFAO, I knew that dude ever since we were 14 years old. We were in homeroom together. And there's this dude by the name of Pesquale in Los Angeles. And he throws this thing called, he's the one who started Electric Daisy Carnival, EDC. So we all were in school together. It's amazing to see us all having careers around dance music when we love dance music as early little 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 ones so <clears throat> it's fresh shows you that whatever it is you want to do you could have willpower and you could turn that stuff into for real for real dun, 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 dun. <laughs> but I, I i read also that uh cnc music factory was a was a big influence is that true no no not at all not at all Nope. <laughs> I, re I read wrong. Yep. I was digging around in the basement looking for... Uh, they had that song. Yeah. I mean, there was, I didn't really like CNC Music Factory. I liked um, uh, Jungle Brothers, Girl La House Shoe. I like Technotronic Pump, Pump the Jam, Pump It Up. I like that stuff. That's That's it. CNC Music Factory was like... It was kind of like, nah... <laughs> It was cool. Not so, I'm not dissing not so much. Them. No, 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 I but get when, it. When I was in high school, to me, that was, was a, just like there was a lot of a lot of really good electronic dance music, um, you know, from from around there, and I'm sure that influenced you a lot. And you've influenced a lot of people. And uh, our host Phoebe is with someone that you've actually influenced a lot. Little Phoebe. Hi, I think I was influenced by your shoes today. Yeah, we got Look the spikies. This. Yeah. So cool. Anyways, yeah, <laughs> Christina here uh, met you a couple years ago, and she's been inspired by you, and she's going to share a story with us. So I actually met you two years ago at your clothing launch in Vancouver, and it was great to see how you had branched out from music and did fashion. So I really admired that. And so it inspired me to start my own clothing line. And uh, since then, because I don't go to school for fashion, but it's just something I've always loved. And it really pushed me after meeting you to really pursue fashion outside of, and it pushed me out of my comfort zone. So thank you. And it was Oh, that's so <laughs> Congratulations. And you, Congratulations. you made this outfit yourself. Yes, uh, this is one of my pieces that I made. Oh, that's fresh. Congrats, <laughs> really, seriously. And you also have a question for him too, right? Yes, I have a question. Uh, so there's a lot of young talent out there right now, and what advice do you have for all these up-and-comers, either in fashion or music? With longevity to you ask, right? To gain longevity in any industry. In fashion and music, let's fashion first. I would um, start a Kickstarter page. Uh, for those that don't know about Kickstarter, so Kickstarter is this, um, it's this community where it's like a social platform for a reason. Like people are on Facebook, Facebook is cool, but other than communicating with your friends, that's the only reason you're on Facebook. But Kickstarter is you have creative projects you want to start and you go on that into that community and you start a page, people follow you and you tweet about and you put on your Facebook page that you have a Kickstarter project. Say, for example, you want to do jackets that have NFC technology or you have a watch that does da-da-da-da-da or whatever it is. And then people like it and then they invest in you, regular people. And they say, hey, and you say, I want to raise $10,000. So I give you 100 bucks, and then a whole bunch of people give you 100 bucks, and you go beyond what you pledged. And then you have the ability to make the thing that you want to make via all the people that like what you are making and then they part then they get a then they get a version of it first so instead of going to venture capitalists who then own a piece of your thing you want to create kickstarter is the people fund your your the thing you want to bring to market so that's what I think every single designer, musician, they have it for music, they have it for technology, they have it for philanthropy, they have it for television series, they have it for movies. Go on Kickstarter and let the people fund what it is you want to do. So cool. Thank you. Thank cool. you very much Great. for your question. Speaking of, as you said, like Kickstarter and, and funding those things, what's, what's the one piece of technology? I mean, you're, you're, you're involved with so much of that, but what's one thing that you're looking for to invest in for the future? So instead of looking around to invest in other people's ideas, I started investing in my own ideas. And um, one of those ideas are going to come to market this, this Christmas. Can you give us a hint? It's going to be, pre be pretty dope. <laughs> it's going to be pretty dope. So We're going to have to wait. So I'll give you a hint. Like in 2005, um, a lot of people don't know that I'm a part of Beats Headphones. I came up with the idea for Beats Headphones. Um, not Beats Headphones, but a record company getting a part of and doing hardware. So I told Jimmy Iving, who brought the idea to Dr. Dre. So Dr. Dre, Jimmy Iving, and myself are a part of Beats. 
um, it's Dr. Dre's thing, but I'm I'm proud to have a piece of Beats um, and launching Beats headphones with songs like I'll be rocking them Beats. That was the first time Beats were actually out in the market was via Boom Boom Pow. And so, and from that, I got inspired to do more and more around technology. So I have this product that's coming out. Actually, I want to come to Toronto, much music uh, around, um, if you guys, if, if I can. Yes, absolutely. In uh, um, October to launch the, the, the product. We would love to have you back. What do you guys think, Canada? <laughs> yes. I, yeah. we, would, we would love to see that. Now, you've been behind so many huge hits and party jams, but what's, the, what's that one song that always gets you on your feet right now? Other people's music? Yeah, or yourself. Um, right now, I really like that song, um, um, Fun, by Fun. I love that yeah, song. Yeah, yeah. I like uh, somebody that I used to know. I like that song. Gautier. But then I also like this group called Everything, Everything. A small obscure band from the UK, but then also like Miranda and the Diamonds. She's freaking fresh. Yeah. You guys, if you don't know Miranda and the Diamonds, you need to get Miranda and the Diamonds. She's the bomb.com. You backslash, you need to check that out. <laughs> you've got some, you've got a lot of great musical taste. But do you think, I mean, I, I was talking with Daniela over here, and she seems to think that guys should not, Hello, Daniela. she should, guys should not be dancing. Is that right, Danielle? Guys yeah. shouldn't be dancing. That's a freaking hook. That's, that's a hook. She just wrote, she just wrote a hit for um, you. I find it really awkward when guys dance because it's kind of cheesy and they, they try so much because they want to look. Show me how they dance. <laughs> Danielle, demonstrate. Yes. No, yes. Uh, you got. You got to think I'm cheesy. You got to have some go to go to moves though. Do you got you got like a go to move? Because I mean, I, we just met, but I'm pretty tall and lanky, and I, I try not to dance because so it's like, pretty awkward. In clubs or like out and Everywhere, about. Everywhere, because they try and show off to the girls, so then it gets way too much, and it's just it's they embarrass themselves at the end. So you don't like Justin Timberlake dances? That's different. <laughs> Oh, you mean people that don't know how to dance, just coming up to you like, yeah. hey, what's up? How you doing? Exactly. No, that's not cool. Do you got a go-to move, though? Hey, what's up? How you doing? Like, no, I don't. No, I don't. No, you don't. No, 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 no. no go-to moves. We'll save the dancing <laughs> till later on. But we've got lots more to talk about. Coming up, though, let's keep the hashtag going. Remember, keep the tweets coming. We've got more with Will I Am. We're going to talk about Britney Spears, Justin Bieber, and the future of the Black Eyed Peas all after this. Welcome back to New Music Live with Will I Am, who is currently trying to tweet out right now. Of course, the hashtag was I wish I had the willpower too. And uh, we just pu pulled a tweet here from uh, at Panda McPherson, who said, I wish I had the willpower to be myself without being afraid at Much Music. This, uh, it's pretty amazing. We've been uh, checking in with a bunch of the tweets and a lot of inspiring things are going, are going on there. Just, just from a Twitter hashtag, it's pretty amazing. But we got to talk about your record, which uh, is also <clears throat> inspiring people. I mean, just with the title alone. But rumor has it, Britney, you, you worked with her on some music. Is she going to be on the album? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I think people have an idea of what it must be like to work with her. What is it like to collaborate with Britney in the studio? Well, one, Britney's like probably the sweetest, one of the sweetest, nicest people on the planet. She couldn't hurt any, I mean, I couldn't see her hurt in a fly. She just, just down to earth and loves making music. So it's, it's always great to work with people like that. Now, I know you've been traveling uh, all over a lot lately and you just flew into Toronto. And uh, just this last weekend, you tweeted a photo with you and Justin Bieber <laughs> at the Teen Choice Awards. And then you tweeted again because apparently you guys were on the same flight from L.A. to Toronto last night. Yeah. Did you guys uh, get a chance to arrange some time to hang out? Yeah, we, we talked about a bunch of stuff, <clears throat> how to finish the, the couple of songs that we did together. Um, one for, for Willpower, the album, he's on the record. And uh, so we have to finish that song. And, um, and then we talked about, oh, then I want to sleep. Then he comes, then he taps on the shoulder like, two, two, two. Yo, I want to show you this song I produced and wrote. I'm really excited about it because it's one of the first songs I produced by myself. So I was like, all right, let me check it out. So we were all crouched down in the aisle. I was like, wow, look at us like loving music so much that we're, it's, I don't know what time it is, but it just woke me up out of my sleep and I'm crouched over listening to your laptop. And the song was dope. 
He was like, yeah, I wrote it, you know, for, for Selena. It's great. And it was really awesome. It was like really, really dope. Like, you know, it makes as a producer, it just makes me proud that somebody wants to get into producing and taking that craft and becoming a songwriter producer. So I think that guy's going to be around for a really, really long time. Speaking of him being around for a really long time, what do you think for him to have longevity? Uh, what do you think is going to be the biggest obstacle for him? doing exactly what he's doing right now and being a producer songwriter yeah because it's easy i mean a lot of people don't realize it but being a songwriter producer is probably the hardest thing because you have to think of everything and when you're big and popular like justin bieber you get a whole bunch of people giving you songs so for him to say you know what i'm gonna learn how to write songs and produce it's probably the smartest the most courageous and you know that's what that's when Justin Bieber is going to be around for 15 20 more years <clears throat> well I know we've only got a short time with you so I just wanted to say thank you make sure everyone pick up hashtag willpower that's gonna be out this fall we're very excited for that and hopefully we'll have you back in October to premiere your new technology yes yes we'd yes. love to talk more about that very soon will I am everybody and this is his song this is love right here